a higher, higher interchangeable knitting needle set review. Hi everyone, Norman here. Today I want to take a close look at the higher, higher knitting needles. These needles are super, super sharp, made from stainless steel. They are also available in bamboo and many knitters love them dearly. They are not outrageously expensive, but certainly not that cheap either. So together we'll take a very close look at the tips, the joints, the cables and all the fine little details that matter. At the end of this video I want you to be in a position where you can make an informed buying decision. Are the higher higher knitting needles the best needles for you? Or maybe not. Let's dive right into it. First, let's take a quick look at the company behind all these lovely needles. So according to the website, Haya Haya was founded in 2012 by a passionate knitter called Kriana Huang. She actually has quite a couple of patterns available on Ravelry.com, so she probably knows what she is doing. And apparently both her father and her brother were or are engineers and helped her create the perfect knitting needle for herself. And the rest is history, I guess. And in fact, we don't really know much more about it. The Facebook page is kind of inactive ever since the pandemic. Um, the blog and news section on Higher Higher Europe is also, it hasn't been updated since 2020. And most of the Higher Higher uh, Revelry groups are also inactive, except for a color group. So, I want you to know what's up with that and drop them an email to which they never replied. I also added a couple of questions you might be interested in. Sadly, I didn't get a reply, so I went to Revelry and sent Kriana, the girl or woman behind the company, a direct message. Didn't receive a reply either. However, I was able to reach the customer support on their uh, sales website uh, via the chat function. And they, um, so I asked, well, where are the higher, higher needles produced? And they said, well, they're produced uh, by a manufacturer in a, I quote, sustainable factory in Shanghai, China. And then, of course, I also wanted to know, well, uh, it says stainless steel on the website. Is there nickel in it? Is there chrome in it? And then uh, the customer support, well, there's no nickel in it. And I was like, well, there's always uh, nickel in stainless steel, to which they replied, well, they are coded, so you wouldn't notice it. Now, I don't think they are coded, but I have to take their word for it. I wasn't able to get them to answer any other meaningful details. So what we can do is we can take a very close look at these lovely needles together. Let's take a look at the needle. So in front of me are three sets. This is an older sharp set. Uh, this is a bamboo set and here these are the so-called steel needles. All three come in this cute cotton pouch with these, uh, well, it probably mimics silk embroidery or silk fabric, but it's probably just polyester or something like that. The website says traditional Chinese brocade, so I'll take their word for it. There is a big compartment here on the back where all the accessories and cables can be stored. And then when you open these pouches, there is another compartment here on top, a little bit smaller, but still very big. If you remove this little Velcro, you can access the knitting needles. So I really like all these uh, compartments for all the notions and accessories, and you can, you know, really store even more in it. I am not a big fan of these buttons or clasps or whatever you actually call them. Um, they come undone very easily and are a little bit bulky. Um, I really don't know what this Velcro thing is. Well, 
blind, whatever it's for. I'm not re really sure what it does. It certainly doesn't, I mean, it's open here. It, it certainly doesn't really seem to secure the needles from falling out. I mean, if you shake them out, they sort of fall out, but you know, not really. So they're reasonably secure in their slots. And um, there are even additional slots here in front where you can store uh, additional needles, a crochet hook or whatever. And in fact, if these are the standard sets. So if you buy one of the premium deluxe, the, the, the deluxe sets or so, there will actually be further needles in front. But you, you know, you could start with a smaller set and then buy uh, additional needles as you need them. I really miss some sort of embroidery or printing here in front of uh, or uh, on top of the slots. So you can really tell uh, the needles apart quickly because otherwise you really have to fish for the right size. Is this 3.5 millimeters or this 3.5 millimeters? Well, this seems to be four millimeters. Uh, this is actually uh, 3.75 millimeters. So that's kind of annoying. So I like that they are going for a very distinctive look, but I do feel these bags could be a little bit more ergonomic. Of course, we need to take a look at the actual contents of the bag. Again, this is a standard set and it comes with eight needles starting here at 2.75 millimeters up to five millimeter needles. There is nothing here stored in this compartment. Uh, all the little accessories are here in the back. And there are actually not that many. So you get one of these needle gauges, very sturdy, looks cute, very fun. Then there are two little cable connectors and you get these four cables, starting at uh, 16 inches up to 40 inches or 40 centimeters up to 100 centimeters. Since you get these two little cable connectors, you could theoretically speaking, create a cable that is 240 centimeters long. So very nice. Then you get two little uh, grippers here. You can use these, uh, if your fingers are a little bit slippery, you can use these to uh, really screw the connections tight. Why they only add one pin is beyond me. I mean, you know, why not just add two or three? These easily get lost and they cost like nothing, a cent if that. I wish they would add cable stoppers even to the standard sets. Um, these, you can buy them separately and uh, that's what I did. Um, so by the way, I mean, you know, that's a plastic bag within a plastic bag. Come on guys, it's 2023. We don't need to waste too much plastic, but you can use these super, super cute cable stoppers. So it's a little panda knitting. Isn't this cute here? You can use these cable stoppers to put a project on hold. Uh, some of the cable stoppers also are round. So uh, again here, plastic bag within a plastic bag. Who needs that really. Anyway, these are uh, kind of bead-shaped um, cable stoppers. Very, very pretty and I would say the prettiest uh, cable stoppers of all brands. Let's take a close look at the actual needles next. So these needles here are made from stainless steel. There is a little, well, bronze screw, I guess, here at the end, but once the cables are attached, you won't see that bit. The material is quite smooth with the faintest bit of resistance. So there is a little bit of drag, but not much. The needles are hollow and very, very light. Perfect for anyone that wants to reduce the weight that weighs down on your wrists. This, however, also means that tight knitters might notice how the needles end up crooked. So for example, these are my 2.75 millimeter needles and I have been using them quite a lot. And you can see here the top needle. You can see there is a little gap so the 
I don't know how well you can see this, but the top needle is slightly crooked and not straight anymore. I tried to, well, fix it a little bit and it worked reasonably well, but you know, that's something you will notice and that's probably because they are hollow. So this is always a kind of trade-off. The needle size is etched into the body of the needles. Maybe a little bit faint and small, but since you shouldn't need in bed lighting to begin, begin with, it's nice enough. I mean, here for these five millimeter needles, it's, uh, you can read it easily enough, but for here, these smaller needles, it can become a little bit difficult. If you scratch the needles across each other, they produce a little scratching noise while when you hit them they will emit a kind of duller clacking noise. So they are neither the loudest needles nor the most silent. So somewhere in between. The bamboo needles have this dark rich color with a connector piece here at the end. The bamboo itself seems reasonable enough quite hard however the quality is mixed as you can see here see um, we have this little marble spot then here difficult to show there is a little ridge here then this needle here is all the top needle is already a little bit crooked here see this um, kind of marble tip and this little uh, needle here already has some well, scratches or dents in it or I don't know what it is. So uh, all in all I would call this a mixed bag and mind you this is a brand new set I haven't used it at all. And a very interesting detail here. So all sets came with this little well sticker quality control sticker or whatever. So it says a set made by and contents checked by. Um, so I'm not really sure if they actually check the needles, the individual needles of each uh, set or just check that uh, there are enough of them. So I don't know what's the issue here, but you know, that is something you uh, might be aware of. What I really need to highlight here as well is that the higher higher uh, needle tips come in three different sizes. So there's five inches for larger hands, then there are the, well, probably standard four inch tips, and then they also have these three inch tips. And this gives you a lot of versatility, either if you have small hands or if you want to knit a small diameter project in the round and so on. So I really, really like this. And you get to choose between these three tip lengths. However, the three inch tips are not always uh, available and I actually haven't seen them in a set. So you probably have to buy these separately. Next, I want to zoom in on the tips. The higher, higher interchangeable knitting needles have the sharpest tips on the market. These are beyond stiletto sharp and the very reason these are my personal favorite tips for lace knitting. By comparison, these here are the Adi tips. These here are the Knitter's Pride Mindful tips. And these here are the Chao Gu tips. And I hope you can see that the Haya Haya tips are quite a bit sharper. So if you love sharp tips, then these are perfect. If you are someone who constantly pushes the needles a lot, well, maybe these will be your nemesis. In this case, I would opt to buy the steel tips. I don't actually know where the name came from. It's a little bit confusing because, um, where are they? Uh, it's a little bit confusing because the sharp tips are made from the exact same material. So I wish they would call them uh, standard tips, midi tips or whatever, but there's that. 
Uh, these here are a little bit blunter, but actually not all that blunt. Let's compare them with the other brands again. These here are the Adi tips, the lace tips. These are the Chagu tips, the sharp tips. And here we have the sharp uh, Knitter's Pride Mindful Collection tips. So as you can see, the uh, standard higher higher tips are as sharp as or almost as sharp or about the same as the sharp tips from the other brands. Their bamboo tips are also rather sharp but uh, they are not much sharper than uh, the tips from the other brands. So here these are the uh, Chaogu bamboo tips tips so you can see they are more or less the same however the higher higher bamboo needles have a much longer taper which i personally also prefer i love long tapers so but in terms of sharpness they are a little well very very similar I am very hesitant to comment on the durability of these tips here because I very, very rarely knit with bamboo. I just don't, personally, I don't enjoy the material, but a lot of people do, so that's why I show you these. Now, uh, speaking from personal experience, tight knitters might notice that eventually these tips will splinter. So, but I guess, you know, bamboo is never a material that will last forever. You can try to sand them down, but I wouldn't actually use proper uh, uh, sandpaper, rather use an emery board. Well, this one, uh, <laughs> I have used it before and use rather the polishing, um, if it has a polishing side like this one here, use that one and slowly go across it because if you actually use sandpaper, then you are probably more likely to roughen things up. If you polish it, it will take quite a little bit longer, but then uh, you are, you know, in for success. We also need to talk about the transition here at the very end of these needles. So what I really like is that Haya Haya seems to be the only company that added, well, I don't know, sheets to their sockets. I don't know how well you can see this, but the actual screw starts further down and I feel, so here this transition here, the, the, the screw starts further down, so there is a little sheet and I think that just creates a safer connection and uh, I rarely, if ever, have the issue with these joints unscrewing while knitting. With some needles, you can continue to screw. So it's like, you know, I, I don't know how well you can actually see this, but I can just continue screwing and that socket keeps on rotating. Uh, I didn't notice how this made the join less secure or they came undone. Uh, it's just a fact I want to note here. I can only guess that they are actually not using glue or not a lot of glue and that's why you can see these little indentations. Here there is another one and those probably keep the screws and the socket in place. And maybe that's actually a good thing. So for example, when it comes to Knitter's Pride and they do use glue, as for, for example, for, I don't know, the Symphony or the Carbons needles, uh, very rarely it happens, you know, once every couple of years that the socket actually broke out of the needle body. body. And of course, I mean, glue can disintegrate over time, especially when exposed to a lot of heat, but that is just guesswork. Here that join is very smooth but if you glide across it with your fingernail you might still notice a little step but nothing that would ever uh, catch the yarn. Still as you can see this is a kind of peculiar ending. So here this taper has two little steps, one here, one here. Then there is this little kink. 
This is the actual transition. Then there's another kink here. And then you have two little steps here. And then you have the little uh, well droplet and then the cable is sort of flat here. So that's a very, very interesting transition. In my experience, the stitches glide across this reasonably easy and you never actually catch the yarn or something like that. In my personal experience, uh, only very large projects with a fine gauge can be a problem. So here, this is a, a shawl I'm currently working on. And as you can see, now it catches, but uh, I can uh, push new stitches to the needle reasonably easy and only sometimes um, will you notice a little bit of resistance. So I really wouldn't call it irritating. It's just that sometimes you need to make a well, somewhat conscious effort to push new stitches and maybe lift things or straighten things out. It's not utterly smooth, but you know, not totally horrible like with, I don't know, the Chagu Fortis or their swivel cables where you really need to be careful that the cable is all straight and then carefully push them across them. Uh, this here works very, very well. It's very important to note that the bamboo needles share this uh, general makeup, but there is one additional um, transition here uh, where the bamboo body actually is a little bit wider than this taper here. And this is definitely something you will notice. There's a noticeable step here as you glide across it with your fingernails. Again, this is nothing that really catches the yarn, but um, you know, you definitely notice it and it could be somewhat annoying to somewhat sensitive knitters. But of course you only push the needles in this direction, not in this direction or rarely. So uh, typically you wouldn't notice it. In this direction it's smooth, in this you know, you can see how it somewhat catches the yarn. I think it only becomes a problem when you plan to knit with a lace yarn or, you know, super fine cobweb uh, strands, you know, that, I don't know, Shetland lace shawl or something. Then this kink here definitely catches the yarn. Of course, no higher, higher knitting needle review would be complete without talking about the cables. So far, higher, higher only offers this one type of cable and it's thin plastic. Uh, while it does come in different colors, there is no uh, difference other than the color, at least not that I could tell and the website states the same. A lot of people will appreciate that these are swivel cables. So I can rotate the needles without moving the cables. So ultimately this means the cables are less likely to end up twisted as you turn your work around. Again, there is a little droplet here at the very end of the cable and this kind of prevents that this transition here catches the yarn and it works remarkably well and I would actually say the higher higher swivel cables are the best on the market in that regard. Now there's one thing I don't quite understand. So here there's this little droplet and then you have a short little length that is flat on both sides. So maybe well half an inch or so 1.5 centimeters. Uh, this portion is flat and then the uh, cable is perfectly round. I don't know why they do this. Maybe it facilitates uh, pushing stitches to the needle or something like that. I actually don't know. I mean, it never bothered me, but I just don't know. So if you do know or have a theory, comment below. One thing you will definitely also notice is that these cables are super, super flexible. So they're very thin but also super, super flexible. So uh, perfect for a magic loop or especially traveling magic loop. You will also notice that these cables curl up quite a bit. 
You can fix it a little bit by pouring boiling water over them, not over the sockets, just over the cable and this will straighten them up. But ultimately, you know, these will always curl. I personally don't mind it at all, never did. And I guess it has to do with picking cables that are uh, too long for the actual size of your project. But you know, a lot of people don't like curling cables and their concerns are as valid as my experience. So I really need to point this out. It's very, very important to stress that the cables come in three different sizes, large, small and miniature. Miniature cables work for needles from uh, 2 millimeters up to 2.5 millimeters. Then you have uh, the small cables which work for uh, needles from 2.75 up to 5 millimeters. And then you have these uh, large cables which work uh, for needles from 5.5 millimeters up to 10 millimeters. And I really, really don't like the fact it's the same with Chagu and you end up having to purchase a lot of different cables for a lot of different sizes. I mean, sure, there are these cable connectors and then you can use a small cable with a large needle. Sure, that's possible. But that means another join, another transition, another pay part that may unscrew, another expensive purchase. And of course, it will also make the needles a little bit longer, which can be a problem when you're knitting in the round. I mean, if you're only knitting with a certain size range, say 2.75 millimeters up to 5 millimeters, well, then I guess it doesn't matter. But here with Chagu, my biggest problem is, I guess, with these miniature cables because with a uh, Chagu you get needles uh, interchangeable knitting needles I think the smallest are 1.5 millimeters or even one millimeter or something like that so there is actually a huge size range here uh, with higher higher the smallest uh, available interchangeable knitting needle is 2.5 millimeters and it only goes up to 2.5 millimeters so that's just three needles and for these three needle sizes you need a whole batch of uh, cables i think that is pretty weak i quickly also want to show you their double pointed knitting needles so uh, they share the same stainless steel body and the same tips here so you can get the double pointed knitting needles in the sharp version and the so-called steel version. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of stainless steel needles to begin with, but if you are, then the sharp uh, double pointed knitting needles by Haya Haya might be a lovely product for you. These are also hollow, so be aware that they will end, eventually end up crooked, especially if you buy one of the smaller sizes, say two millimeters or 2.25 millimeter needles, then they will end up crooked because these needles are hollow inside. So let's sum up this Higher Higher review. Just one little note here. Higher Higher also produces uh, single pointed knitting, knitting needles. In fact, even interchangeable knitting, uh, single pointed knitting needles and very short uh, circular knitting needles for sock knitting called flyers. Since I never use these kind of needles, I am not commenting on them here. I want this review to be about my experiences. I bought all these needles myself. I use them and I share my honest and unbiased opinion here. I didn't get any money from Haya Haya or even, you know, free products. So what's my verdict? When it comes to lace and shawl knitting, I do feel that the higher higher knitting needles are my personal favorite. These these sharp tips, oops, sorry. <laughs> Uh, these sharp tips are utterly divine and they make knitting complicated uh, patterns such a joy. No more, you know, no more, you don't have to fish for the entrance of that pearl two together through the back loop or when you're doing uh, cables without a cable knit, uh, needle, uh, things like that. It's very, very easy to enter these stitches.
I also really really like their cables for these kind of projects. I know in these days everyone is going crazy about coded uh, wire cables and I never really liked these and I prefer plastic cables like these even if they curl a little bit but they're just so flexible and thin and for certain projects that certainly can be a problem. I don't know, for a heavy file sweater with a big needle size you might end up distorting the stitches things like that. But I typically don't knit these kind of projects to begin with and if I did I wouldn't use the higher higher knitting needles either. For me it's all about these uh, lovely lovely sharp tips. Uh, the needles themselves could be a tiny bit slicker. So for simple stockinet stitch projects I probably prefer, where well, I want to go as fast as po possible, I probably uh, still prefer the coated needles uh, uh, by uh, Adi or uh, made by Adi or um, Knitter's Pride, but when it comes to lace knitting, speed is typically less of a concern. All in all, I wish their pouches would be, well, a little bit more logical and make a little bit more sense. I don't actually like the way they look either, but I guess, I guess, you know, that's at the end of the day, they work, they store the needles, and you know, that's all that matters. I am, however, um, Oh, I already have them here in my hand. I am less convinced when it comes to their bamboo needles. Maybe I constantly get bad batches, but I do believe that both Chagu and Adi offer the better bamboo, uh, bamboo product with better quality control. But I guess, in a way, I mean, with bamboo, it's you always kind of have to find a compromise, uh, one you are most comfortable with. So I guess they still could be viable for a lot of knitters. I just wasn't all that impressed by the quality. I guess my biggest issue uh, is with the company itself because it's not very transparent and I never really liked it. So Quiana founded a company called Shanghai Haya. Uh, limited uh, or something similar to that. I'm actually not even sure of the name because it seems to have changed probably because uh, maybe they needed to change the legal basis or something like that. And this Shanghai Haya company it seems to have the ideas and these ideas are then passed over uh, to the manufacturer, this sustainable company, we don't know anything about it. And this company, this manufacturer then produces the needles and assembles the cables and probably a different company uh, supplies the bags and the accessories. And then these various bits are assembled either by this higher company or probably elsewhere and probably not in China but maybe uh, by the various distributors around the world. So for example if you take a look at the labels on the plastic wraps of the sets it's very kind of interesting because uh, it looks like it was made by there's a button. This could be an abbreviated Chinese sign. Maybe it was a gate. I don't know. Could be. That's the only thing that would make sense for me. And then it was checked by Jean De. But if you look very closely, then you can see that A, the person seems to be rather familiar with the European script and B, it certainly were, it was two different persons. But again, uh, so filling at least filling out that uh, little label. Now you might ask why I am so focused on that. I, am I Sherlock Holmes now and not teaching knitting anymore? Well, because if customer support tells me that these needles are produced in a sustainable factory in Shanghai, well, 
that kind of, I mean, maybe that's just me, but if someone uses this exact wording, to me it sounds exactly like they knew that their uh, production was not up to Western standards and they sort of want to hide that. I mean, most companies that focus on work ethics, uh, renewable energies and all that kind of stuff, typically go the extra mile to highlight that fact. So for example, Knitter's Pride does this and you will find a whole section on their website. And of course, that is uh, very commendable. And I guess uh, this kind of weird company structure might also explain why the pouches sometimes look different, the accessories do, the different cable sizes, because uh, the company, the Haya Shanghai company, doesn't actually have all that much control over the exact specifications and it's closer to a drop shipping company than to a family uh, business or family run business under one roof. So for example, like Adi uh, is. Now, do we these guesses, uh, and that's exactly what they are. Do with these guesses what you want. I really need to stress that Changu also produces in China and probably under very, very similar uh, circumstances. Nidus Pride is uh, produced in India and I would say both companies are certainly not innocent lambs either. Um, I do have to say that both uh, Nero's Pride and Chagu eventually replied to all my questions and emails while I never received anything from Haya Haya. As it is, I am left guessing. Is there nickel in these needles? Is it, is it surgical stainless steel? Is it normal stainless steel? Is it some special alloy? Where does the bamboo come from? How does the, this distribution network work? Is there a difference between higher, higher Europe and all the needles uh, sold in America and so on? Uh, now I do have to stress that I am using these needles frequently, so who am I to throw the first stone? But of course, I, I wanted to share my thoughts and what I was able to find out and maybe some of you know more, then please comment below. Anyway, that was my review of the Higher Higher Knitting Needles. Comment below if you have anything to add, any questions, and of course, as always, Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.